Good morning. Wanted to do a uh, a series of videos on the tropicals and how they perform uh, in the the frost of the Central Valley. Uh, so this first video is going to be covering the Sepadella and the Sapote family of uh, tropical trees. So starting off with, uh, and I'm I'm going to do it in the order from my experience in terms of cohortiness. Uh, the trees that can tolerate the cold down to the trees that will need some assistance when the temperature drops below 40 or so. So the first sapote tree from my experience that will handle the cold without any problem is actually going to be a, a white sapote. Um, this particular variety is the Subel variety. It is a white sapote. As you can see, it is a winter plant. So it's kind of flower and fruit during um, middle of winter. Um, white sapote, quite possibly the world's tastiest fruit. I mean, when you bite into a white sapote, it is like biting into, the, just like butter. It is very smooth and very creamy and very sweet. So white sapote, the, 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 the the thing with sapotes is, although they are quite frost tolerant, they actually do need some help in the summertime. Most sapote trees just cannot tolerate the Central Valley's intense heat. When the temperature gets above 100 degrees, you're going to want to somehow give it some shade just, um, just to keep it along uh, until it becomes established and it's able to tolerate the sun just a bit. But again, keep in mind, sapote trees, winter time, not a problem. Summertime, they need help just a bit. So white sapote. The other tree that uh, is gonna not require any help at all during the winter time is gonna be this guy right here. This is a Chico sepadella. So the Chico sepadella, um, it's the, the, the taste of the fruit is uh, it, it really is just like most sepadellas. It, it's it's like when you bite into the fruit, it's like you're eating pure brown sugar. It is just one of the sweetest fruits. So as you can see, it, it's in a container, and I've got it you know nestled back there, protected by the the sun once its sun comes up. But if you look at it, no problem at all with the frost. I mean, this guy is a champ. So, Chico Cepadella. The other Sapote tree, Cepadella tree that I want to talk about is actually going to be back here. It is another Cepadella and it is going to be this small guy back here. This is an Elano Cepadella, uh, very close uh, relative of the uh, Chico Cepadella. Um, <laughs> the thing with most sapote and Cepadella trees is incredibly slow growing. I mean, this tree's actually been in the ground for, I want to say this is the fourth year. Um, <laughs> it's what, maybe two feet tall? So incredibly slow growing. The other tree that um, is going up the list that, that is cohortia is actually going to be this particular sapote here. This is a green sapote. As you can see, you know, it's, it's another one of those trees that, you know, really, really loves the uh, winter. Well, it tolerates the winter. Um, got a bunch of new growth here on the top. Uh, it's gonna. It's shedding. It's in the process of shedding all the old growth here, all all, all leaves here, um, and um, yeah, it, it's got a bunch of new flush here. Again, nestled back here, um, protected by the uh, Namwa banana there, and also more importantly, the um, carry store foot here, and also to some um, respect, uh, the uh, red manila here, or red uh, Malaysian guava here. Another incredibly slow-growing uh, sapote tree. The cool thing about green sapote is 
this is going to be as close to a mamey sapote as you can get in terms of taste and texture. Um, yeah, again, just give them some heat protection. So, the other tree, another sapote family, is going to be this guy right here. A black sapote. So, disclosure, it is really just a sapote by name. It's really not even in the sapote family. It's actually more in the persimmon family. Very sweet. Uh, the, the texture, it, its nickname is actually the chocolate um, uh, pudding tree. Uh, the, the, the fruit itself is black inside, looks and tastes, and has the exact same consistency as a chocolate pudding. Um, this guy will, when it gets a, a bit coarse dress, some of the foliage may turn black a bit. Uh, let me see if I can show you some example here. Um, yeah, this guy is, I'm not seeing any evidence. I'm trying to find you the, oh, right here. This is what uh, it, it can do when it gets uh, a bit coarse dress. Uh, but again, not to worry. I mean, when the wa winter warms up, the old foliage will uh, drop and new ones comes out to take its place. So, black sapote. Another sapote that I wanted to talk about goes by a different name. It's actually going to be this guy right here. He's been in the ground for a, a little over two, three years. This is a yellow sapote, also commonly known as a canister. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it's not a big fan of the frost. However, uh, it seems to be just, uh, you know, it seems to be uh, doing fine. So, yellow sapote. So now, there is one sapote that I won't be able to show you, which I have inside my greenhouse here. And that would be the, the mother of all sapote. It is going to be the mame sapote. The thing with mame sapote is the tree itself starts freaking out when the temperature drops below 45, 40 degrees. So that's why I've got it in my heated greenhouse here. Um, in fact, I actually have a seedling here. This is what the seedling looks like. So notice, because it's grown from seed, it's actually able to acclimate a lot better than uh, a, a grafted one. But here's the sad thing though. Um, I, I'm not, I don't think this guy will ever produce fruit just because it does take them, um, if you grow from seed, it does take it a good seven to 10 years uh, to grow from seed and uh, before it starts bearing fruit. This particular seedling, believe it or not, even though it's maybe a foot tall, is actually going three years old because the frost keeps knocking it down. So that's what you're going to get in the Central Valley if you are trying to grow a, uh, a mamey sapote in the ground from seed. And also another downside about mamey sapote is the fact that if you get a grafted mamey sapote and you're able to keep it uh, alive during the winter time, once it starts bearing fruit, you're going to have to babysit it uh, for a, a good year to two years because that's how long it takes for that fruit to uh, develop and mature and ripen on the tree. I mean, you're talking a year to two years before you can actually pick it up. Uh, but in my opinion, I, I think it's well worth it just because the, the fruit itself is, it can be massive. I mean, it really is like a size of a football. It's a good five pound size fruit. Um, very sweet. I mean, the ones I've had anyway are very sweet. But anyhow, yeah, that, that, that covers the sapotes. Uh, these uh, are sepadillas. Uh, this is what it looks like. Once it's ripe, it is very soft. And uh, again, with sepadella, when you eat it, it is really like you're eating brown sugar. I mean, it is one of the sweetest fruits there uh, is. I mean, it is just the, the, the fragrance alone is really good. I mean, you, it smells just like sugar. Yeah. S sandy texture. 
uh, with brown sugar. Um, most sapotes have a, a seed or two in them. The, the seeds, uh, I find the germination rate if going from seed to be about 50%. So half of them are not going to make it, but you know, you still have the other half. So yeah, anyhow, that is the uh, sapote trees. Going here mostly in the ground without any assistance. And um, I mean, you know, they, they do grow here. Just again, summertime, okay? The problem is going to be with the heat. When the temperature drops ab above 100 degrees, just give them some uh, shelter, some protection. Uh, but in terms of the cold, not an issue. So anyhow, all right, have a good afternoon.